It had been raining the past few days and plants would normally not get enough sun. So at our home garden, we had to plant our crop species and during rainy days, we turned to microgreens for our meals. Oh wow, what a surprise. Yesterday, it was just barely 2 inches tall. In a day, these sprouts grew 7 inches. Right now, we are looking for some spring onions, tarragon, and celery because Tata Yeti is making something delicious with these giant overgrown mongo sprouts. Sukiyaki mongo sprouts, stir fry with celery, spring onions, and tarragon. Don't ask me where he learned this recipe. Tata Yeti is a kawampangan, so Tata has all these wonderful recipe ideas in mind. We always look forward to him cooking because it will always be restaurant quality when Tata cooks. Mm. In this episode, we will learn about what do we need for hydroponics, how do we use Tata Yeti solution for hydroponics, and as a nutrient supplement for plants. We will also be looking at an easy setup and finally a recipe to cook this rare tall mongo sprouts I haven't seen before. So stick around as we will also learn how to grow giant mongo sprouts in 4 days and cook a wonderful recipe with them and some fresh herbs from the roof garden. All these and more in this episode. What do you need for hydroponics? Commercial growers have been using hydroponic systems for years, but many home gardeners are embracing the idea as a way to have homegrown vegetables year round. If you're thinking about trying hydroponics, you're probably wondering what kind of hydroponic tools you'll need and how much will equipment for this gardening method cost. If you are a beginner, you can get a simple hydroponic pot and beginner's kit from Tata Yeti's and a solution and some seeds. This will entail a 400 peso investment. Plants require four things to survive and flourish. Light, a substrate in which to grow, water, and nutrients. Let's take a look at the basic hydroponic equipment you'll need to supply all four key elements. Light. Sunlight provides the full spectrum of visible and non-visible light. It's not only the cheapest but also the best way to provide light for hydroponics. Many vegetable plants require a minimum of 6 hours of direct light per day. In Asia, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So choose locations that give the best source of sunlight. The alternative? The use of grow lights. Bulbs with an output in the range of 4000 to 6000 Kelvin will provide both warm and cool light. When using artificial light, additional hydroponic tools and equipment are needed. This include light fixtures, structural support for lighting, power strips, and accessible outlets. Here at Tata Eddies, we customized our parking roof to grow plants and converted its use into a small greenhouse to utilize natural light. Substrate, the base in which an organism lives. Since hydroponics does not use soil, plants require an alternate substrate for support. Like soil, substrate materials hold water, air, and nutrients plants need for growth. Substrates can be natural materials like coconut fiber, pea gravel, sand, sawdust, peat moss, perlite, and vermiculite. Or they can be man-made products such as rock wool or expanded clay pellets. Water. Reverse osmosis water is the preferred choice for hydroponic systems. This purification process provides water that is 98 to 99% pure. The purer the water, the easier it will be to keep plant nutrients in the correct balance. You also need additional hydroponic tools to monitor water pH if you are using the A and B mixture. At Tata Eddies, we use rainwater as a base that we gather through our cistern. Tata Eddie has planted a ready-to-use nutrient solution for hydroponics which do not need checking of pH and TDS or total dissolved solids. However, do not add water to Tata Eddies if you are using this as a medium to maintain its pH levels that are great for most vegetables. Nutrients Plants require several key micro and macro nutrients. These include nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, calcium, magnesium, sulfur, iron, manganese, copper, zinc, molybdate, boron, and chlorine. 
In episode 3, we will be discussing what these nutrients mean for our plants. These are basic nutrients that your plant needs to grow and it's also found in Tatay Eddy's complete plant nutrition available on Lazada. Many hydroponic gardeners prefer to buy a hydroponic premix which contains these nutrients in the correct balance like Tatay Eddy's. Many as well prefer the A and B mixture so that growers would have full control on the nutrients per species that they grow. Fertilizer designed for soil won't contain all of the above nutrients and can lead to deficiencies. Additional equipment for hydroponics includes a total dissolved solids meter to measure the strength of the hydroponic solution as well as your pH meter in a way to check water temperature. It will be best for the plant if we maintain close to 27 degrees Celsius to maximize the plant's absorption of the solution. How to use Dr. Eddy's as a hydroponic nutrient solution. If you are a beginner yet, step one, you can buy a hydroponic pot from our store and a gallon of Dr. Eddy's solution or customize your own hydroponic container. Step two, propagate your seeds by putting them in wet medium, preferably on cocopeat soil. Cocopeat soil is made from the pith inside a coconut husk. It is naturally antifungal, making it an excellent choice to start seed, but it is also used in rugs, ropes, brushes, and as stuffing. Cocopeat gardening is also used as a soil amendment, potting mix, and in hydroponic production. So sterilize this for 15 minutes in boiling water before use in hydroponics. Step 3. In a few days, you'll observe your seedlings growing and you should be looking for true leaves and that your plant is upright. That is your marker that the plant is ready for transplanting. When the seedling sprouts, the first leaves that appear are not true leaves, but rather cotyledons or seed leaves. They sometimes still have the seed coat on the tip as they grow upwards. A true leaf is one that can perform photosynthesis, the process plants use to make their own food. Let's take a look at cotyledons. And these are the true leaves. Step 4. Place the seedling on a cocoa peat filled net pot, then pour Tata Eddy solution up to a point that is barely touching the net pot. It's important to ensure that air space is provisioned in your setup about 10 centimeters. You'd want your O roots to grow as well as WN roots. Wait for your plant to grow. Take note that oxygen roots get nutrition via aeration and water and nutrient roots get nutrients from the solution. As your solution gets depleted, your WN roots could turn into O roots in 2 to 4 days, but your O roots will not turn into WN roots, so if they get wet, there's a high chance that your plants are going to wilt and they may die. So ensure that when you need to add additional water solution, keep it to 2 to 3 centimeters below the net pot. In this video, you can see that the O roots spread from the side of the net pot and the WN roots juts down from the bottom of the net pot. Step 5. As the solution gets depleted, your plant then grows. By experience, for lettuce, the green hydroponic pot should be sufficient until first harvest of your lettuce. For lettuce using Tata Eddy solution, we see it ready for harvesting in 3 weeks. And Pecha as well should be in the same time frame. It's also important to choose good seeds for germination. Remember to have a diary and check it and record your observations. How to use Tata Eddy's as nutrient supplement for plants in soil. Step 1. Ensure that your soil mix is perfect and well draining for your plant to thrive. Here's our favorite sample soil mix where we combine cocoa peat, rice hull, carbonized hull, and garden soil. And the ratio is 20% for cocoa peat, 20% for rice hull, 20% for carbonized hull, 
and then 40% for garden soil. In this video, Tatay Eddie is combining one gallon of coco peat with one gallon of rice hull and a gallon of carbonized hull and two gallons of garden soil. We just use a pot for measurement and that's easy to use. Step two, understand the pH requirement of your plant in soil. Some plants are thriving in a more alkaline medium. Here's a table listing pH requirements of common plants. Step three, water with pure Tata Eddy's complete plant nutrition about 50 ml to 100 ml per week and make sure it reaches the roots. There's no overdose in Tata Eddy solution. Okay, it's time to cook. So what we did with these manga seeds was soak them in water for 8 to 12 hours. Lay them down on a filter mat and then set them in a warm dark area. We put Tata Eddy solution on day 3 when the sprout was barely an inch tall and on day 4 the bean sprouts took a giant leap to 7 to 8 inches. When the produce is this fresh and this good, we gotta make a recipe. Sauteed with onion, garlic, and sukiyaki beef. Added oyster sauce, pepper, and seasoning. Cooked for 2 minutes in high heat. We took and chopped up some celery, chives, and tarragon from the garden. That's it. From seed to a meal in just 4 days. Here's how it looks. It looks like a noodle and it tastes so delicious and fresh. It could feed more people too because it grew 6 times the size from 1 inch to 7 inches. Thank you for watching and we hope you can share some of your recipes too. And if you try growing them at home, share your experiences with us, we'll be happy to hear them. This has been Frank Alvarez Mercado and it is our hope to help every home grow food.